1957, they became the first black Africans to get complete freedom. Before Ghana gained independence, agriculturalist Tetekwashi was personally responsible for bringing cocoa plants to the country, which are now one of the country's main export crops. Tetekwashi, who was a master blacksmith by his teens, thanks to his diligence, was the first blacksmith to establish himself in Equiapim Mampong. He also liked farming. He set off on a journey to the Spanish province of Fernando Po, now known as Bioko in Equatorial Guinea in 1870. Six years later, he introduced the crop when he made his way back to Ghana with a number of cocoa beans in 1876. Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we will be talking about Tetekwashi, his role in the Ghana's cocoa industry, the major cocoa producing countries in West Africa, and the benefits of cocoa to their economy. It is undisputed that the seeds Tetekwashi sold at Mampong were successful. Regardless of whether he was the first to bring cocoa to Ghana, when pods were given to friends and family, they too started planting cocoa. Other farms soon did the same. The basil missionaries didn't enter the scene until this stage. When they brought in significant amounts of the cocoa produce, cocoa beans or cotton were sent from Ghana's Gold Coast to nations like Nigeria and Sierra Leone. Ghana started exporting cocoa in 1891, and the first recognized shipment occurred in 1893. Nearly half of the world's output used to come from Ghana. Ghana was the world's top exporter between 1910 and 1980. Due to bushfires, this job was relinquished. Ghana still produces the highest quality cocoa and the sale of the raw beans and finished goods brings in hundreds of millions of dollars each year for the nation. Tetekwashi died on Christmas Day of 1892 and was the pioneer of Ghana's staple crop and the principal buckwalk of the country's economy. On 25 February 1925, the Gold Coast government was petitioned for a grant for the upkeep of some of his relatives. Since independence, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. From now on, there is a new African in the world. The government of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah has built a first-class hospital and fitly named it after him at Mampon Equiapim, the Tetekwashi Memorial Hospital. However, cocoa is much more than just a crop with impressive sales figures. Ghana's national identity, social history, and even future climate are all shaped by cocoa, not just economically but also culturally and historically. As they say, Ghana is cocoa, Ghana is chocolate. The second largest producer in the world after Cote d'Ivoire is Ghana. Approximately 850,000 farm households are employed by the cocoa business in Ghana, which also contributes significantly to the country's economy by earning more than $2 billion a year in foreign money from export harvest. Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, and Cameroon are the four West African nations that produce 70% of the world's cocoa beans. The two countries that cultivate the majority of the world's supply of cocoa are by far the Ivory Coast and Ghana. Following these two are additional nations that produce cocoa, including Brazil, Ecuador, Indonesia, Cameroon, and Nigeria. Up to 90% of farmers in Ghana and Ivory Coast depend on cocoa as their main source of income. The cocoa from both Ghana and Nigeria came from the same source, Fernando Po. It is acknowledged that the cocoa grown in Sierra Leone is of a distinct kind from that grown in general on the Gold Coast and in Nigeria. 
There is no documentation of where the Portuguese obtain their seeds or plants from in the American tropics. Given how brief the journey was, it is quite likely that the plants survive and eventually establish themselves in Sierra Leone. There is an intriguing possibility that the cocoa grown in West Africa today has two origins, with the Gold Coast and Nigeria's cocoa coming from Brazil and Sierra Leone's from the West Indies. Through the Council du Café Cacao and the Ghana Cocoa Board, Cocoa Board, respectfully, Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana have taken a number of steps to increase the profitability of cocoa for farmers. Early in the new millennium, Ghana provided farmers with better cultivars, discounted fertilizers, free pest and disease management, a pan-territorial producer price, and a rise in their portion of cocoa export prices. Between 1990 and 2005, these policies led to higher production and a decline in poverty levels in a setting of high global market pricing. In order to guarantee farmers in Côte d'Ivoire a constant income with favorable consequence between 1979 and 1999, the government also set cocoa prices compared to the world market. In conclusion, the cocoa sector has a big influence on farmers' livelihoods and the economy at large. It has a lot of potential to reduce hunger and poverty, enhancing development in Africa. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stick around for more informative videos.